I don't really like open world games. I know that some of the most influential games made in the last two decades took place in an open world, but a lot of them are just not very good. Big, giant, sweaty, dangling horse testy just swinging in the- For every Fallout New Vegas, Witcher 3 or Elden Ring, we have a Forspoken, a Redfall and a Starfield. Open world games are deceptively hard to make because of their subtle complexity and I hope I can show you why in this video. But before we start, thank you for watching. I don't play multiplayer games much. The majority of what I play are single player. Most of my gaming time is spent running around doing things by myself. And when you spend enough time in a place, you start to notice your surrounding. And that's the first problem of an open world. A living, breathing world that feels believable is something so many studio promise, but so few could deliver. Let's start at the surface with the aesthetic. I'm not talking about graphical fidelity, but the art direction of the game. It's not about pretty colors or polygons on the screen, but how those things fit together to form a coherent vision. A prime example for this is Forspoken. The world of Forspoken lacks an identity. Everything looks nice, polished, and about the same. There were no unique structures or locations that could capture the audience. The game looks like a flat land that expands into the sunset. From what I can vaguely recall of the story, the world of Forspoken is plagued with some sort of magical death cloud. It's spreading rapidly, destroying everything in its path. I believe so. It corrupts everything it touches before destroying it completely. But even with that motive, the game just couldn't communicate the dangerous nature of the disaster. Areas touched by the death cloud look like they're painted over haphazardly. Cities that are supposed to be abandoned are basic assets with some moss and grass. The whole world looks very plastic. You wanna know what a land ravaged by a disease really looks like? Go take a tour around Kaelid and Elden Ring. I know this comparison is like pitching coughing baby against hydrogen bomb, but Square Enix put 100 million dollars into the baby, so it deserves it. The moment you land in Kaelid, you know it's gonna be a bad time. Everything there is coated by this sickening red hue similar to the Scarlet Rot, from the ground to the ruins, mountains and the sky. The game even makes the region red on your map. All the castles are in a state of disrepair, the roaming animals are mutated monstrosities, the forests are dead and overtaken by rot swamps and patches of red mushrooms scattered on the ground. The whole place feels like it's been dead and has decayed for so long that a new form of twisted life is beginning to flourish on its rotten corpse. Don't get me wrong, Elden Ring looks great, but graphical fidelity is not the focus of the game. Each region's environment has a reason for the state they're in, and sorta of like a central theme. Every single element in these places adheres to their central theme, creating unique biomes with their own identities. That's why you can't mistake Limgrave for Kaelid or Farm Azula. I just need to say the name and you can already vaguely picture what the environment in each location was like. That's the power of a coherent art direction. Compared to that, Forspoken is a pretty cardboard box with some open space for action set pieces. The world, despite all the pretty flora and tall mountains, feels barren and void of life. Making a good looking world is one thing, but having intention behind that pretty world takes another level of vision and execution that not many studios are capable of. But art direction is just one ingredient in the process of bringing a game world to life. To make a world believable, the inhabitants need to act that way as well. This can be achieved in many ways. Some games created extensive dialogues so the player can spend a lot of time talking to the NPCs. Others put the NPCs on an elaborate routine to simulate a functioning world even without the player's presence. Whatever it is, making good NPCs to interact with is one of the vital steps in creating a good open world game. And that's the second problem. A lot of open world games failed at creating believable NPCs, so you could never truly immerse yourself in the experience. The most notable example I can think of is Bethesda and the NPCs. You see, simulating a social setting is all about player interaction, and Bethesda make these feel like I'm talking to raw code lines. If you're here to talk me into working on Liberty Prime, you can forget it. What changed your mind? Nothing changed my mind. I promised you I'd return to the Brotherhood, and I've kept my end of the bargain. Do I need to remind you why you made that promise in the first place? No, that won't be necessary. Oblivion is an ambitious attempt at innovation, and that was the last time Bethesda showed their brilliance with the NPC design. Look at the handful of modern Bethesda games. You can describe the interaction in game which is a few short sentences. Dialogues are written stiffly. You and your ilk seem hell-bent on destroying everything our government has worked to achieve. NPCs talk at you instead of to you, and they have little to no reaction to your in-game actions. And it's truly a pity, because the game worlds that Bethesda created are so beautiful and fun to explore. Except for Starfield, which went with the horrible idea of procedurally generating the galaxy, all of Bethesda's game worlds are the highlight of the experience. <laughs> Oh, 
Whenever you exit the starting location, you're always welcomed with a site that promises great adventures. It feels like you could go in any direction, and there would be a story waiting for you just around the corner. Then, you interact with the world's inhabitants and are reminded that you're in a video game theme park. None of these characters are real, and you're about to be sent on a fetch quest. You open the map, select the location, and fast travel there. The loading screen stares back at you. Suddenly, playing the game feels like a chore that you don't know why you started. That's why it's so easy to drop Bethesda games if you've played them fully and not as a dungeon grinding simulator. We'll touch on the gameplay later, but I'd like to show you some examples of how NPCs are done in open world games. In GTA V, NPCs are designed to respond to your every action. They would answer your provocations, be intimidated if you pull out a weapon, or even call the police if they see you commit a crime. I am no, calling no, the really? police! That's fascinating. Hello, police? Yes, this certainly is an emergency. Cooler yet, if you silence them before they could make the call, the police would never come. Let's try another example. In Fallout New Vegas, there are over 65,000 recorded dialogues, world record by the way, despite being made in only 18 months. Among all those voice lines, some of them are immortalized in internet culture because of how iconic they are. I'm sure you've heard of this sentence. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Or this one. But we can't expect God to do all the work. The average quest is never just a task given by a quest dispenser. Instead, you're doing a friend a favor or searching for some pre-war components with your life on the line. The dialogues are so well written that even with the Fallout 3 face zoom and stiff facial animations, NPCs' interactions still come off as genuine conversation that you could have with someone from the setting. Bethesda, with decades of experience and how many games under their belt, still struggles to make a game with remotely believable NPCs. I'm sure you've seen the numerous Starfield clips where some NPCs do some funny stuff. With all the examples I've listed, I want to make something clear. It's very easy to compare the average games with the classic heavy hitters and point out all the flaws, but it's the reality that open world games with a lively and believable world is sadly not a common thing. But enough about the world, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the gameplay. In my opinion, most open world games don't stay fun for long. Now I know it's a sweeping statement, but stay with me. If we exclude MMOs, open world games can be sorted into a few types based on the gameplay structures. We have the very familiar Bethesda gameplay, the second type is Ubisoft, with the third one being either an extension or a combination of the two. Let's tackle the Ubisoft formula, since it's the weakest one. The minute-to-minute -minute gameplay of almost all Ubisoft games is decent. From FPS to third-person stealth action, Ubisoft has figured out how to make that game pretty smooth. But the support systems of the gameplay, however, couldn't keep up with this. The overarching goal of gameplay in an Ubisoft game is not very compelling. Outside of the story missions, which make up about 45-50% to of the game from my own estimation, you're gonna spend your time roaming around the world doing some checklist gaming. Scanning the map on top of some toll towers, killing enemies in some outposts, doing challenges, hunting collectibles. It sounds kinda cool, but after 3-5 to five hours you realize you're not doing anything substantial. Despite the legions of grunt you just took out, you didn't put a dent in their numbers since they won't stop spawning. I feel like Sisyphus, pushing a boulder up a hill only to watch it roll down, except no god inflicted this on me, I did this to myself. Whether an area has been scanned or liberated has no bearing on the missions. It feels like the world gameplay and the story have no effect on one another. Now I'd like to ask you, if you have a game formula that's not very engaging, how would you go about fixing it? Make sure to comment down below so I can ignore all of them like how Ubisoft did. Instead of evolving the gameplay loop over time, the solution was filling the map with collectibles. I'm sure you've seen this image. This is the world map of AC Unity, and I'd say it's still one of the nicer maps. That's why every Ubisoft open world game plays the same after 5 hours, because other than the new visuals, you're doing the same stuff you've done thousands of times in the previous games. And it's infuriating, because Ubisoft games have a lot of potentials. They don't lack good ideas when it comes to innovation, but the execution is often lackluster, and the core remains the exact same with no changes. The sad thing is that games would still sell because people saw this potential for greatness in what they are playing. But with more playtime, the truth slowly reveals itself that you've played this game before, but with different skin. For me, it's about the 7 hours mark when my apathy threshold reaches its limit and I just stop playing altogether. When we talk about open world games, it's impossible not to mention Bethesda. Their games are famous for having incredible gameplay loop, with subpart combat to put it nicely. I have made a video about the Bethesda formula, but it was before I got the chance to play Oblivion and Morrowind. At the core of every Bethesda game is this incredibly simple but compelling loop of exploration, combat and looting. 
The quests give you reasons to explore the beautiful world, and while you're out and about, some places will distract you from your path. You will find a dungeon, fight through it, and get some awesome loot after defeating the last boss at the end. This fight will exhaust your resources, forcing you to find a town or city to replenish your supplies and, you guessed it, get new quests. An ornament. Solid gold in the shape of a dragon's claw. I've got some coin coming in from my last shipment. It's yours if you bring my claw back. It's a simple formula that allows for infinite complexity. It's perfect for the open world RPGs that Bethesda makes. Almost all Bethesda games has top tier exploration where the world is big enough to feel vast but dense enough to not feel empty. Not to mention they are always nice to look at. The looting is also something that Bethesda gets right. Many RPGs choose to make their loots random, which can be quite annoying at times. You can invest a lot of resources on killing a tough enemy, only for them to drop like a piece of bread or a low tier healing potion. Wait, what? What have I missed something? What? Dude, where's the loot? Bethesda on the other hand, make it so that you can loot whatever your enemy has on them. Taking on tougher enemies in dungeons can be incredibly rewarding because of all the awesome gears you could find. Will I use them all? Most likely not, but it's damn fun to hoard them though. And that's precisely where the fun ends. The combat in most Bethesda games was never applauded, at best it was serviceable. And it's truly a shame, because when I played Morrowind, it was clear that Bethesda was onto something unique. The system balances perfectly on the line between real-time and turn-based combat in the 3D environment, something that's very underrated. It has real-time combat, as in player inputs are not in turn, but the effectiveness of combat is governed by player skill and stamina. This mimics the effect of a turn, where without action points we can't do anything. In my opinion, this system preserves the tactical nature of turn base while still allowing for skill expression of seasoned players by not restricting attacks and movement. And that's the last time Bethesda attempted something remotely engaging with their combat. With each release since 2002, Bethesda has endeavored themselves to dump down the formula as much as possible to appeal to a wider audience. We went from careful planning mixed with flawless execution to this. The Bethesda gameplay loop and the environment design team were the only thing that kept the studio around till today. As you can see with Starfield, the moment Bethesda removes the gameplay loop from their game by gutting organic exploration, it becomes painfully clear just how directionless their games are. There's no perfect game design, no game can satisfy 100% of its players, but I think it's fair to say that the gameplay of open world games is put under much more stress compared to linear games. Most linear games with separate levels would take around 15 to 20 hours to finish with the odd 30 hour long one. But ever since the open world genre enters the mainstream, playtime started to become a selling point. It gradually increases from 50 hours to 100 hours to spawning a whole new business model of games as a service. The open world gameplay is decent, but to support 50 plus hours of entertainment, it must have something really special. Otherwise, the game will become a chore. And if I want to do chores, I might as well do the real ones that matter. And that is why I don't like open world games. It's not because the design is played out or uninspired, but that it has so much complexity that not many studios could even remotely give it a fair chance. Once in a while, someone captures the lightning in their bottle and we got a huge hit. But until then, I won't hold my breath. Thank you for making it this far. Let me know in the comments how you feel about open world games. Do you hate them or love them and why? And sorry for the lack of content. I was in a creative slump for the longest time and life has been hectic. But once again, thank you for watching this far. Have a nice day. I'll see you in the next one. And bye!